Hi there, me again. Um, gonna do another letter of the alphabet based on what happened today. F is for frustration. Yes, that is right. F is for frustration. So I was going through my YouTube channel and trying to update a few of the default settings. Uh, didn't seem to be working right. So I tried to research it. And I found post-stroke, I have difficulty at times focusing my attention. Where before the stroke, this would have not been an issue at all. Uh, the other day when I was trying to help a colleague out at work, um, also getting frustrated. Not with the colleague at work, uh, but with myself. Part of it was... <clears throat> Um, I was so anxious that I started stuttering, um, and that I found frustrating. Um, had a conversation with my physiotherapist about strokes and frustration. Well, there's a couple reasons why things are frustrating. Um, now, for those of you that have had a very demonstrative stroke, uh, where you're having to learn to read, walk, write, speak, eat, like, I cannot even imagine how f frustrating that might be. I'm not even going to pretend to know, right? For those that have to relearn those skills, um, I, I can only imagine. Um, I know I get frustrated in physio at times uh, because there are things that I know I could do before the stroke that now either are extremely difficult and sometimes painful. In a few cases, I've had to say, nope, not doing it, right? Um, now, I've been able to pick up on those, but you're going to have frustrations for many reasons. Um, and again, frustration's primary cause is when reality and expectation don't collide well. So if you're expecting this, and you get that, you're going to be frustrated. And that's negative frustration. Um, so again, when, when expectation and reality don't collide well, frustration is the end result. Um, I've noticed that I might get a bit more frustrated more easily since the stroke. Uh, actually, I'm going to say I do get frustrated more easily. Mainly in myself, um, if I'm being frustrated by a person, I'm pretty direct about, listen, you're, I'm getting frustrated because of this interaction. Here's exactly what I need from you, right? Um, generally that's received well, um, sometimes not so well, but that's not my problem. I'm because like, for example, with me, um, incongruence, I, my brain can't deal with incongruent things, things that just randomly pop up like, oh, what is that? Um, the brain doesn't know how to categorize that or catalog it or classify it. So I can't really deal with incongruent things just popping up right now because it has no context. My brain doesn't know where to, where to put that information. So I'm learning to deal with some of this. Um, <clears throat> also, some of the frustration is you can remember being able to do things. Um, my last job in mental health was actually working with acquired and traumatic brain injury patients um, as a personal support role. I spent two years with a young man, uh, one year in grade seven and one year in grade eight. And he would get frustrated uh, trying to do mathematics, doing his maths or sums, um, depending where you are in the world, uh, arithmetic. Uh, problem, he could remember what he could do in September and October when he had his event and acquired his brain injury, um, and then go forward, you know, six months, seven months, eight months. He was fairly skilled at math. Um, after his event, not so much, right? And... You know, I used to express to the, the people that work around and the teachers and the EAs that it's just, you know, post-event frustration. He can he can remember and effectively recall 
what he could do before his brain injury. Now he's trying to resolve the fact that I used to do this, and I can do it at this level, up here, and now I can do this, but it's happening at that level, right? And so there's frustration. Other reasons why I get frustrated, um, I don't have the same level of focus. Uh, things I used to be able to sit down and do for hours, like hours, um, now become two hours. Um, trying to learn new things can be frustrating because I'm trying to form those meaningful short-term memory bonds that I can recall later. Um, so sometimes it's not not so easy to try to get through this event, and it's frustrating. Um, and I can only appreciate for those of you that get to watch someone in their recovery journey uh, of a stroke, or from a stroke, um, brain injury, how frustrating you must get. Now, frustrating it is to watch because for me today, trying to not get frustrated while figuring how to do something on YouTube. Uh, without a manual to update some default settings on my account uh, ended up with me taking medication because I got a wicked headache and I had to lie down for a few hours and that unfortunately the frustration for me gets to a point where my brain just gets overloaded and it doesn't know what to do right uh, and at that point I get a headache and might have to limit my stimulus and, and go lie down. We might have to do cues for quiet time. Yeah. Ooh, that's a good one. I have to write that down. I'll forget to write it down because I had a stroke. Q is for quiet time. Um, so F is for frustration, right? And again, I re re reserve the right to uh, revisit any of these letters in the alphabet um, when it comes time to. Now, what does it mean to have, I'm going to just call it post-stroke frustration. Well, some of it will just take time to resolve your old normal to your normal, new normal. Um, some of it might take some extra patience. Uh, some of it is going to be completely, you can remember, then to now. You can remember being functional then at a certain level, at a certain amount of skill, a certain amount of proficiency, uh, route memory, route ability, uh, and then you've got the now. And the now, there could be a drastic change from the then to the now. For example, learning how to walk again, right? Uh, in the initial five or six days after my stroke, I was extremely frustrated just trying to have a conversation, right? uh, just attempting a conversation uh, could be difficult because I was still stuttering and stammering. Uh, and I wasn't frustrated at anyone but me because I'm just trying to order bacon, eggs and white toast with orange juice and coffee for breakfast and it's a conversation that would normally take exactly that long and now it's going to be a seven minute conversation because it's going to take me you know a while right uh you know and it, it's and and what's even more frustrating is there, there's no predictability to this there is no reliable data, reliable indicator, weather vane, if you will, that will predict how frustrating something will or will not get, will predict when I get frustrated, how I get frustrated. You know, it's not like, crap, I ran out of butter, I got to go to the supermarket. 
Um, you know, it's, and you're frustrated because you need butter. Um, the simplest things could become frustrating, and that's just something to deal with. Um, I might do uh, an in-depth thing about post-stroke frustration after a bit of research. Uh, see what I can come up with that, you know. Um, but for those of you that have had a stroke, there will be times of frustration. Uh, exactly how will your frustration present itself? I, I don't know. I, I really don't. Um, for those of you that get to follow along the journey of someone who's had a stroke, the only advice I have is when that person becomes frustrated, you need to ask them a very simple question. What is it I can do for you right now? And then whatever that answer is, you do it. There's no debating it. There's no questioning it. There's no, what if I did this? I'm like, no, I need you right now to do this, right? And, and just do that thing, whatever that thing is. Um, you know, there's no debating that that person is now frustrated. Uh, the debate is now, how do we get that person the least frustrated as possible? How do I get that person the least frustrated as possible? Right? And that might mean you were planning to do something and you're turning around and going home. Uh, you know, that might mean uh, they've got to go lie down for a couple hours. That might mean anything. It, it's so unique to the individual, I, I can't even describe what it might mean to them. I just know what I need when I get frustrated. And then sometimes I don't even know need, need necessarily know that. Um, I don't necessarily know what will get me unfrustrated. And that's just not to be difficult or dickish or obstinate or picayune or pick an adjective. Um, I don't know. Like there are times people go, oh, what was it that you need? And I'm like, I don't have a fucking clue. <laughs> well, do what's right for you. I wish I knew what that was. That's why I'm asking you. I need some help. <laughs> you know, so there are times where, you know, people get frustrated due to stroke um, because they're going through the throes of their recovery rehabilitation journey. And it's just a thing. All I can say for friends and family, coworkers, whoever happen to be around that person that you deal with on a day in day out basis who's had a stroke. When you notice you're getting frustrated, just ask them quite simply, what is it I can do for you right now that will make you less frustrated? And then do that thing. Not up for debate. I've been in the situation where people try to debate me, and that doesn't go well. Um, because I will always do what I need to do to get me out of that situation, regardless of what that is. Right? And that's just the thing. So... That being said, just please, um, for those of you that are going through the, your recovery rehabilitation journey, just be mindful. You are going to get frustrated constantly and regularly. Um, just try not to take that frustration out on people around you. Just try to let the people around you know exactly what you need, when you need it, how you need it, where you need it, right? And for the people around those that have had a stroke, please, just listen to the people that are saying that I'm frustrated and this is what I need. Right. You, uh, you apparently, you know, can be a bigger help than, you know, um, just by listening. Right now, for those of you that are going through the recovery journey, either personally, because you've had a stroke or you're assisting someone through their recovery journey because they've had a stroke, um, and you like what you've seen over the last going to my third month, woohoo! um, please like share, subscribe with your friends. If you happen to, you know, want to see me cover something about a stroke journey, be it mine or in generic terms, uh, please leave some comments down below or email directly. I now have a new email at strokeassaulter at gmail.com. Again, that's strokeassaulter at gmail.com. I'll probably create a Twitter. I don't know. Um, yeah, well, more things to frustrate me. Um, and then at that point, I'll cover whatever content you might want. 
And then if you happen to see either, either in yourself or someone around you the signs or symptoms of a stroke, that being facial droop, uh, inability to raise both arms equally effectively or at all, uh, slurred, stuttering speech, inappropriate word usage for situation or context, inability to smile equally effectively or at all, uh, inability to, to um, stand unaided, general body weakness or weakness on one side, <clears throat> please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and then dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.